Good evening, Dr. Sparks. Thank you very much for allowing me to, to speak to you this way, um, being able to, to do this later uh, for credit. I really do appreciate that. Uh, the title of today's message is Overcoming Adversity. Have you heard the phrase, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger? What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. The story we're going to talk about today is about a man whose life was a roller coaster, to say the least. A roller coaster. He had, this man had extremely high highs and very, very low lows. My favorite type of roller coasters are the ones that are uh, super fast. They go extremely high and really fast and low. And then there's all kinds of turns and twists and uh, flipping up backwards and all kinds of stuff like that. Those are my, those are great roller coaster rides. But uh, I don't know if we, any of us would choose to have our lives represent be represented like that, like a roller coaster. But this man had a life filled with highs and lows. Later today, I encourage you to open up your Bibles and, and read this story in its full, uh, of this story, uh, story of an incredible life. Um, you'll find the book, uh, this account in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis chapters 37 through 50. Uh, Genesis chapter 37 through 50. That sounds like a ton of chapters, and uh, we can't get to them all today in the short time. But what I plan to do is just give you a, a quick summary of what this uh, this this life of, of Joseph is the man we're going to be talking about. His life uh, throughout, and it's represented within these chapters. So check out these chapters later on today. You won't you won't be sorry. These, uh, these, these verses will encourage you, they'll bless you, and challenge you at the same time to lead, lead a life like Joseph. Well, Joseph was the youngest brother, of the youngest of 12 brothers. Now, these 12 brothers, they were from a mixed family. Uh, so that, that starts with a, a, a kind of a, a dynamic of its own, of, of a, a mixed family, a blended family coming in. And uh, these are mostly half-brothers. And so that creates some sort of background of, of this story. And Joseph was, a, uh, was a, his father's favorite child. His father's favorite child. And, and uh, his other brothers knew that, uh, that Joseph was their father's favorite. And uh, that caused some problems as well, because I don't know if you've ever grown up with uh, uh, being the favorite child or somebody else in your family was the favorite. And, and it just it, it causes a lot of tension and problems. And uh, it was no different in this family. In fact, uh, I'm sure they, they probably put the fun in dysfunctional uh, because they, they, that probably was what it was like. Um, <clears throat> so not only was uh, Joseph his father's favorite, but his father made him this elaborate, beautiful coat. And he, he gifted it to his son. And this coat was amazing because uh, of its time because it was rare fabric and, and a, a great and vibrant colors. And it was extremely expensive and hard to find those types of fabrics. And so when he gifted this coat to uh, his son Joseph, and Joseph put this on, uh, people knew uh, that this, this was an amazing gift and that, uh, that his, his father had gifted it to him. And so if you can imagine, he's wearing this coat in front of all his other brothers, and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't get the coat like this for Christmas. What's, well, I mean, what's going on here? This is an amazing gift, and uh, and so he would wear this and flaunt this coat. I'm, I'm, I can I can almost sense it myself. I can see this happening, and he's flaunting it in front of his brothers, and uh, and it's just causing more tension and more tension, and uh, more jealousy occurring. And <clears throat> on top of that, God gave Joseph the amazing ability to to dream dreams and have visions. And not only that, the best part of the gift, in my opinion was that God also gave him the ability to interpret these dreams. So not only was he dreaming these dreams in of, of ama amazing proportions, but God was giving him the ability to be able to interpret what those dreams meant. And so that is an amazing gift in itself. And so one night, he had, he had these dreams, and he'd go wake up and run to his family and, and tell them exactly what these dreams were he had and what they meant. And one night in particular, he had a dream where uh, basically, his it was his brothers that uh, were kneeling and bowing down uh, before Joseph. Like Joseph, his oldest brothers were bowing down to him. And uh, as you can imagine, his older brothers were just like, this is out of control. This is crazy. Our youngest brothers just, that's it. We're, we're done. We're through. And so they actually plotted 
a, a, a scheme to to get rid of Joseph. And uh, they were talking about killing him. They were talking about just getting rid of him. And finally, they they decided to sell him into slavery. They sold their their youngest favored brother into save slavery. They ripped the coat off of him that his father had gifted him, and they they rubbed it into blood and and of uh, from an animal uh, to make it look like that Joseph was dead. <clears throat> and and so they took they went back and said that the an animal attacked Joseph and. And the, the father, the father was heartbroken. Meanwhile, Joseph is being sent to Egypt, uh, where he was to become a slave. So Joseph was taken to this Egypt. He was ripped from his family. He was he was ripped from his the love of his earthly father. And in Egypt, he was placed under an Egyptian leader named Potiphar. <clears throat> now Potiphar had a, a pretty high place in Egypt, and um, and he was watching Joseph, his slave, and he was seeing that that. Joseph is an extremely hard worker. Joseph is someone who, who God is blessing. Everything he touches uh, is turning to abundance and surplus. And, and, uh, and the scriptures actually talk about that the Lord was with Joseph wherever he went. And whatever he did. And all things he did was because of, uh, of God's blessing in his life. And so Potiphar wanted more of that. And so he put, he put Joseph in charge of all administrative responsibility in his household. And and everything he owned, Joseph was was a part of it. it would would have uh, a a major part of the going ons of his household, of Potiphar's household. So you see, he went from being ripped from his family to extremely working hard, uh, and he was a man of integrity and a man of character. And he he worked his way to a place. Of, be, of honor, of place in Potiphar's house, which is a, a great place to be in in his time. And so how long do you think he lasted there? Um, scripture tells us it wasn't very long. He's in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar's wife takes notice of Joseph. And he try, she tries to scheme him into to sleeping with her and, 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 and cheating on her husband. And Joseph wouldn't have anything to do with it, because Joseph here is a man of integrity, a man of character. And Joseph had not wanted had no, nothing to do with it. And, uh, and so Potiphar's wife did not like the fact that Joseph wanted to say no. And so he, uh, she schemed to do, to do something, and he, she told some lies, and he got Joseph thrown into jail. Thrown into jail. So here he's in this high, high, and now he's getting, again, tossed into jail into a very low time of his life. And he wasn't just in jail overnight, you know, on, on that cot. He was in jail for, for two years, two full years. And so... <clears throat> So there you have it. Joseph now is in another low part of his life. And God has him there. And, you know, he could be, he could be you know, sulking in his own self-pity. And, and he could be mad at God and all that kind of stuff. But no, what, what happens? If you look into those chapters, you'll see that Joseph begins to make prison life better. He, he begins to make prison life better. Because God, again, is with Joseph, and Joseph begins to make prison life better. He comes with some friends, he, he gets some friends, and he finds out uh, that these, these, uh, these friends are being tormented by dreams. And so, so he interprets some of these dreams, and, um, and one, of the, one of the men was, uh, was basically, uh, he told him that his dream meant that he was not going to make it out of prison. And sure enough, the man died the very next day. The next man, he interpreted his dream and he said, you're going to be great. You're going to get out of prison and you're going to go on to do good things. And, and sure enough, that happened to that other prisoner. And, uh, and Joseph, as the prisoner was leaving, he's like, remember me. Remember Joseph, the guy who interpreted these dreams. And, um, and sure enough, a few, uh, a few chapters later, um, the, the, the prisoner that was now working for Pharaoh of Egypt remembered Joseph. Pharaoh was having some bad dreams again, and, and he brought in all his wise men, and no one could interpret his dreams. And at that time, the guy who was a former prisoner, a friend of Joseph's, remembered. He remembered what Joseph said, remember me. And he, pulled, he told Pharaoh to, to summon Joseph, and Joseph got to go and stand before Pharaoh and listen to the, the tormenting dreams that the Pharaoh was having. And because of the gift that God gave him, he was able to interpret those dreams. <clears throat> so, Joseph interprets these dreams for Pharaoh, and he 
is so pleased with the plan that Joseph had uh, because the Pharaoh's dream had this huge famine coming um, and it was going to rip up Egypt and Joseph had a plan, a gift uh, of interpretation from God and he was able to, to, to help Egypt out. And in so doing, Joseph went from dungeon to glory just in a matter of hours. Pharaoh made Joseph second in command of Egypt. Second in command of Egypt. That's like the vice president of the United States of America. He was put in another place of honor. He went from an extremely low low to, again, the high of highs. So let me catch you up. <clears throat> Dad's favorite son. Brothers hate him for it. They fake his death and sold him into slavery. He worked really hard and was blessed with nice position in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife lies. Joseph gets tossed in prison innocently. Then he interprets Pharaoh's dream, and Pharaoh makes him second in command of all of Egypt, surviving the coming famine. What an amazing story, isn't it? Isn't that just a, an awesome story? Well, get this. The famine is so intense that it brings Joseph's brothers, Joseph's brothers who betrayed him, who, who uh, faked his death, it brought his brothers into Egypt because they needed to purchase some food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but his brothers did not recognize Joseph. So what do you think happens next here? Does Joseph seek revenge for the abuse and turmoil that his brothers caused him? Or does he do something else? I'll let you guys figure that one out. If you haven't read the story before, again, you have to read Genesis 37 through 50 tonight. Do it. You won't regret it. It's an amazing passage. It's one of my favorite uh, passages in history or in, in, the, in the Bible. And so uh, I highly recommend it. It'll bless you uh, like crazy. So needless to say, Joseph faced some serious adversity, didn't he? Didn't he? He had those highs. He had those very low lows. You know, adversity means that we, we go through something difficult. It's, it's a misfortune. Many of you can relate to this, this story in the Bible. In fact, all of us have gone through difficult times. We have experienced passing of loved ones. We've experienced being ripped apart from family. And some of us have never even known what a family can really look like. We've never had the opportunity with, with, to have a family. And so we've experienced those heartaches. You know, some here have been severely abused or neglected. Or maybe you were the abuser yourself. Sometimes we're confronted with adversity of our own making. And sometimes we mess up our lives ourselves. But other times, we have to deal with adversity because of the actions of others. Have other people made your life difficult? Or have you dug your own hole? Sometimes we mess it up. Sometimes those around us mess it up. And there are other times we don't know who messed it up. We just know it stinking messed up. Right? The reason this story of Joseph's life is so encouraging to me is because, it's, simply put, he overcame. He overcame. Joseph overcame the adversity of being a slave. Joseph overcame the adversity of being wrongly accused by Potiphar's wife. And Joseph overcame the adversity with his family. The main point of today's message is this. We all go through tough times. Yes, some, of the, some are tougher than others, but adversity can strike at any moment, at any time. The only thing that pulled Joseph through those extremely tough times was his relationship with his Heavenly Father. If you remember... The scriptures here say that, that the Lord was with Joseph. You see, all of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all of us, we have the best, best promise ever. The scripture says that he will never leave us or forsake us. You know what that means? That means that God will never turn his back on us. We don't have to worry about that. He will not turn his back on us. He is with us. Regardless of how bad life gets, remember, God will always love you. 
Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for you in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He is always seeking your best interests. Romans 8, 28, he says, And we know that all things work together for good of those that love God and who are called according to his purpose. In Matthew 28, basically, he will always be there with us. He says, Surely I am with you always even to the very end of the age. You see, Jesus told us in John 16, 33, here on earth, you will have many trials. You'll have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, take heart, because I have overcome the world. Jesus said in no uncertain terms that we would face difficulties in this life. We will face difficulties in this life. But he has given us such an amazing assurance that he has already overcame the world. He's already overcome it. So then, what's the difference between someone who who has Jesus in their life and someone who doesn't? What's the difference? Both people go through maybe the same amount of adversity. One person has Jesus, the other person does not. What's the difference? The difference is The person that has Jesus Christ in their life doesn't have to do it alone. If you have made a commitment to Jesus Christ, you don't have to do this this life alone. God is there. He's promised it, that he will never leave us or forsake us. You don't have to do it alone. We all will face difficulties, Jesus said, but I am so glad that God is for me and not against me, that he's on my side, and he'll be on your side. If you have taken the time to surrender your life to Him, life won't always be easy. It's not promised to be easy. But it's definitely better with Christ on your side. Amen? Don't see that.